Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today's question was suggested by a viewer. Thanks to Miles for this one. Amy plays Kozlex Command, choosing to scry X and then draw a card and exile a creature. Then she twin casts the spell. What value of X will the copy have? What modes will it have? Okay, so the important rule to know here is that when you copy a spell, you're also copying all the decisions that were made as part of the process of casting that spell. Therefore, the copy will have the same value for X and the same modes as the original. It would also have the same targets, except that TwinCast says you can choose new targets. You might remember that there is a rule that says if you play an X spell without paying its mana cost, then the only legal choice for X is zero. But if you have a look, that rule only applies if you're casting the spell. Copying it is similar thematically, but as far as the rules are concerned, they're completely different. Now, there is a couple of interesting complications that can happen with choosing new targets. For one, let's say that Amy was casting this Kozilek's command to exile Nick's Nadu, and she wanted to make the copy exile his grizzly bears. How many times would Nick get to reveal the top card of his library? Intuitively, some people might think that the copy momentarily targets Nadu and then gets changed to grizzly bears, which would seem like you would get two Nadu triggers in addition to the one from the original spell. But that's not how it works. This rule here clarifies that if you copy a spell and choose new targets for the copy, then the way the game actually does that is by making you say what the new targets will be and then creating the copy targeting those objects. To follow the original example, there's never a time when the copy targeted Nadu. Grizzly Bears was the target from the moment that copy was put onto the stack. This being the case, Nick would only get two triggers, one from the copy and one from the original Kozlex command. Check out my video on how Venerated Drop Priest interacts with Storm if you'd like some more details on how this process works. Another interesting fact is that you don't have to choose new targets if you don't want to. Now this is true even if the old targets would be illegal. For example, if Nick copied a spell Amy played that targeted an opponent. For situations like this, it's important to know how illegal targets work. If a spell tries to resolve, and even if one of its targets is still legal, it will resolve, doing as much as it can but ignoring any instructions related to any illegal targets. On the other hand, if all of a spell's targets are illegal when it tries to resolve, then the spell is removed from the stack and none of its effects will happen, even the ones that don't have anything to do with the targets. Let's close out with a challenge question to test your understanding. Amy plays Cryptic Command, choosing to bounce Nick's Grizzly Bears and draw a card, while she controls Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief. Can Amy draw another card without bouncing her ivy? Well, I think first off we can all agree that Amy needs to copy this cryptic command with ivy's ability in order to have any hope of this working. Unlike many effects that copy spells, ivy does not give you a choice about what you target. You have to target ivy. The wording on cryptic command makes no mention of the bounce being optional. So in order to draw a second card, Amy would have to bounce the ivy here. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another Daily Ruling. Until then, I hope you have a great day.